Welcome back to Briggs on Books, our international talk show where we get to talk to authors from all over the world. Um, so many of our viewers are, are authors in uh, training, authors getting ready to uh, publish their first book. That's why I like to have on uh, people who've actually uh, got it done, got books published. Our next guest did just that, not just once or twice or, or three times, but multiple times. And uh, he's going to turn it into a family business, a family effort. Welcome, Dr. John Chinaka. Tell our viewers where you're located, John. No, thank you, Mike. First of all, appreciate being on. We're in the Myrtle Beach area of South Carolina. South Carolina. Uh, yeah, the Gulf capital of the world. I'm just going to, I got a million questions about your, your family, your business, your structure, but I just want to throw a couple of book covers up here. Um, the one with the cat, I can't see the title of it from here, but a kitty named Cricket. Right. And uh, this one. Yep. Yeah. Who's the, uh, I got the cover on the screen there. Who's this uh, written for? This is for. Uh, uh, kids, about what ages? Yeah, um, well, they can be read to, you know, a three-year-old, four-year-old can be read to. Uh, but, yeah, up to about, I would say, eight or nine years old would be wonderful book for yeah. kids. And then I have another one about your English setter. Yeah, um, a lot of our books, Mike, have to do with um, really our children growing up and the pets that we had while we were we're raising the kids and raising the pets and, and the adventures we went through with that. And then also our grandchildren. So we produced about 10 books and they all are, our focus is family and they're all uh, wholesome, uh, beautiful, uh, illustrated, uh, and uh, just uh, try to teach an ethical and a moral kind of value in it. You know, uh Tell me a little bit, bit about your background. What made you uniquely qualified to uh, write books uh, that would appeal to kids? Yeah, I had 42 years uh, in the public schools. I was a teacher. I taught all the grades from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Oh, boy. And I was a cu guidance counselor for 25 years uh, of that 42 years uh, here in the Myrtle Beach area. And... Um, uh, you know, so I've seen thousands and thousands of kids in the elementary school. Elementary school is where my focus was. Mm -hmm. And then I was also an administrator for a period of time in the elementary school. So uh, all of that uh, came, gave me a good foundation, along with, obviously, my lovely wife raising children. Mm -hmm. We have two boys and uh, three grandchildren. And tell me how this uh, venture started. Is it MJ Tanaka Publishing? It's a big family business. Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm retired. My wife is retired from education. I'm 76 years old. I know a lot of you are, it's so nice. Your program does slant to uh, inviting people to be involved in, in writing. And if they have writing, and you know, I know you love books and yes. so on. I've, re I've seen a lot of your YouTube videos with, uh, with your authors. Um, now, during the pandemic, here at our home, uh, I have a 96-year-old mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She's wheelchair-bound and has memory problems. And during the uh, COVID time, we had a lot of time on our hands. Mm -hmm. And we got thinking about some of the stories and the funny things that happen when you raise kids and pets and all. And we said, we need to write these things down. So yeah. my wife and my son, Joel, uh, started putting together stories. We had a lot of them. And we thought, gee, we, we should be doing some public. We could write books on this. Yeah. I had published things before during my regular uh, career as an educator, mm -hmm. but I was doing guidance materials for kids. And I wasn't doing it myself. I had another a publishing company, Youth Light, doing it. So um, we got into writing the first couple of stories and learning all that's involved. And it just is amazing industry, publishing mm -hmm. industry, writing books, and and what's out there. So it was kind of a, a learning experience for all yeah. of us. Um, I would imagine there's, all, well, you, you'd know this better than anyone. It, it seems there's always a need for books for kids that age, elementary school kids. Oh, golly, yes. Uh, you know, their, their libraries in the schools are filled with them, of course. But, um, you know, reading with kids and sharing uh, stories with them it is a fantastic yeah. way to, to learn to uh, 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 enjoy uh, life together with your kids as they're, they're being raised, you know, reading at night and 
before they go to bed and so on. I know you've talked about in that in some of your videos, mm -hmm. uh, how uh, you, even as an elementary school kid, you, rem you remember these kinds of yep. things. But, yeah, you've got to read with your kids and be with them, spend time with them, love them, and do all that. Uh, and uh, it's not a dead, by any means, it's not a dead activity, no. No, yeah. it's, it's, I think, I don't know, we probably only had one or two books in the house when I was before uh, kindergarten, and my mom read it to me so many times that I don't know if I was reading the book or if I was just repeating mm -hmm. the words she said over and over. But kids learn to recognize the shapes of words and things and, and get started right. with that. And you've probably heard me say on the show before is uh, uh, I always urge our, our viewers, go buy these books, but don't just buy them for your kid. Send some over to grandma because kids love to be read to by their grandma. And uh, oh, yeah. And of course, every yeah, kid, if you have a kid that's three, four, five, six years old, one thing they're going to be doing this year is going to birthday parties all the time. And uh, mm. the kids uh, would always bring junk gifts and stuff. I always sent my kids with books. And it was a lot of fun uh, to give books as birthday presents to the neighborhood, the neighborhood kids. Yeah, well, you know, reading is not going to go out of style, as you know. Even though they use computers and they use yeah. phones, and so they're constantly reading, writing. They're going to have to be able to do that in any kind of a situation. Even speaking, it helps you speak and learn how to communicate. Uh, so, yeah, reading is, is not going to die out. It's, yeah. it's better than ever. It's bigger than ever. 60 million books on Amazon right now. So there's yes. a lot of, there's a lot books, of activity yeah. and a lot of availability. There's, there's no doubt about that. I'm going to put one more book cover up here on the screen. I want you to tell us about this book. Uh, it's Humor. Is it Humor and Heart? Humor and Heart. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a, uh, an, it's an anthology collection, actually, of the first four books that we did. We did, we did four children's books that had to do with our grandkids uh -huh. and our children. And what I did was I put them all together in one collection to kind of, um, you, know, uh, you know, our first goal was uh, make this a legacy to be able to share with our kids and our grandchildren and let them have something. And um, as we got more and more uh, involved in it, we just saw there's so many uh, enriching things that we can do for other people, give yeah. these away, uh, use them uh, in, 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 in gifts, uh, uh, and just share them with other people. So it's been a, it's a, been a wonderful adventure, learning how to build the book yeah. Put it in and, and, and go through the whole process of, of publishing. So we're yeah. actually open now to, because we've had this success, people are asking us to do their books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. also a new adventure for us. Well, that's one of the themes on our show is uh, you finally get your book written, and then what happens? There's so many more steps uh, after you finish writing the book that uh, most of us don't understand. So you've been down the road quite a few times. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, all our books are done by, it's amazing, we went through Fiverr and we got some fantastic illustrators from Pakistan, India, oh. Serbia, uh, various people just in, in, in the process of making the book, getting to know them and communicating back and forth by email, writing the storyboard, and then having them do the illustration. So AI, I, I have not used AI in any of the development of these books. They're all uh, hand done, so to speak, you know, hand drawn. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the books are unique that way and authentic, I guess you would call it. Um, and of course, we've got a lot of connections with various illustrators and people. There's yeah. a process, you know, in building, building the book, and uh, it's an interesting one. I guess uh, if you were to help other people get their books published, you could cut years off of the process if they had to go out and learn uh, on their own the things you've learned, you know, uh, by doing it. Um, yeah. By yeah, that's an amazing part. There's so many different parts to building the book besides coming up with a story, yeah. breaking it down into a storyboard, actually, mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, vetting uh, three or four different illustrators to do the book, actually giving him one scene and then having them uh, draw that scene, and, you know, and you might yeah. want a certain style, a certain color, a certain look, and so on for it, and you're picking someone over that, and then you're communicating with them to build the book. Uh, then you're editing all the text uh, in a children's book, you know, each page, yeah. 
and uh, then putting the book together, you know, actually actually putting the, the scenes together and the pictures together and mm -hmm. everything else that makes up the book plus the cover. And then learning about KDP, you know, on Amazon. We also published through um, uh, Ingram Spark mm -hmm. and Lulu. So there's a lot of, uh, I know you, you bring this out in your talks, there's a lot of avenues for um, uh, independent uh, indie authors yeah. to be able to get books published. Uh, and you don't have to go through one of the big five companies to be able to, uh, you know, get a book published. You can do it yourself, but it is a lot of work, yes. Now, uh, every before I go on the air with any author, the last thing I do right before you go on the air is I drop their name into Amazon because Amazon lays out a pre pretty nicely your books, a uh, little blurb about you. But my goodness, what popped up when I put in your last name? Your wife's writes books with you. You write books with your son, I think. And there's all these names involved uh, associated with your name. Yeah. Uh, again, we run it through because the three of us are working together. Uh, you know, Joel may come up uh, with a story, so okay, he's the author, mm -hmm. and then we'll work together. He was in today, for example, looking at the last draft for the, the story about our English setter. Um, and so we do work together on the different parts, um, but of course the author is the one who actually comes up with the story, the text, and then, uh, you know, as a family, we kind of work together on putting all the parts together. Mm -hmm. uh, and the person who is actually the author is going to have the say on the color that goes inside, the kind of text you want to use, um, the different little uh, uh, fine points about the book, how they want the book, and so on. So, yeah, yeah. It is, it's a family business, a family get-together. Yeah. Um, well, I just want to make the point uh, to our viewers uh, do like I do. Uh, find John's books. And by the way, can they find all your books there on your website? Yeah, that website has everything in there. Yeah. Just what we stand for and, and the whole, uh, uh, all the books and, and all the, the connections, you know, links and so on to Amazon. Uh, no problem at all. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, just go to Amazon and order all these books, but start with the website, and maybe you'll find a, a different way to buy the books, a, a different path to buy the books, but for goodness sakes, please go buy some of these books for your kids or your grandkids, or if you have little kids, buy a couple of copies for Grandma, too, and uh, buy copies for the kids to give away throughout the year when they go to all these birthday parties. Uh, John, uh, we're really out of time. What else do you want our viewers to know before we go? Well, first of all, what a fantastic job you're doing with allowing uh, new authors to be able to talk about their books and show some of the things on your show. Appreciate you so much, Mike, for being Thank able you. to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, you're fascinating. Your approach is fascinating, and uh, uh, what you're doing is very interesting. And it's great to hear about your background in education, that uh, when it comes to uh, relating to kids, you know what you're doing. And... Uh, so I just appreciate your time, and I hope you come back on the show again. God bless you now, Mike. All right, and for our viewers, stick around, because we have more authors coming up. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to put this slide up. Here's four books all together from John and his family uh, publishing, and we'll be back with more Briggs on Books right after this. <laughs>